My name is Dolores Catherino, and in this video I'll talk more about the ideas behind polychromatic music. These past several years of musical exploration have been incredibly inspiring, and there's still so much more to explore. I hope to share my perspective of where polychromatic music fits within the evolving language of music. Let's start by looking at the distinctions between microtonal and polychromatic music. Microtonal music describes a diverse set of methods which are used to create new microtonal scales. So generally we're talking about scales with more than 12 notes per octave. Some really exciting developments are happening right now in microtonal music, like the discovery of new methods for generating unique scales and harmony. Some examples include extended just intonation, moment of symmetry scales, and the use of complex mathematical functions. The problem is that these microtonal scales use many different types of accidental symbols. And for this reason, microtonal music describes a group of scale methods rather than any foundational system. The developments in microtonal music are pushing our theoretical and notation system to its outer limits. To see why, let's look at the situation with a wider frame of reference. Historically, we'll begin with the modal system, which uses a repeating framework of seven notes labeled A through G. A numerical method of naming intervals is superimposed on this seven note system. And this gives us intervals called seconds, thirds, fourths, and so on. The chromatic system came next and added another five notes. It uses the flat and sharp accidental symbols to define these new notes. These accidentals were also used to define new keys, like the key of A flat. Notice that the chromatic system still retains the modal framework of note naming and interval numbering. Interval naming terminology was also updated by adding modifier words to define the new varieties of modal intervals. For example, a third could now be modified with terms like major, minor, diminished, and augmented. In the 20th century, a similar expansion of the pitch and harmonic language emerged with microtonal music. Microtonal scale methods were added to the chromatic system. This was done by exponentially increasing the number of accidental symbols to notate these new pitches. The problem continues to be that there is no cohesive framework of micropitch symbol notation or terminology. As a result, many incompatible symbol sets coexist, and even a single micropitch scale, like a quarter tone scale, can have several different sets of accidentals. Microtonal terminology for these new interval sub-varieties has also expanded with even more modifier words. For example, we can now distinguish a just major third, a natural major third, or a grave major third, and so on. Look what happens to chromatic notation as accidental symbols begin to multiply. This is an example of the diverse notation of quarter tones. And this is only the surface of an immense collection of incompatible accidentals that exist in microtonal music. Quarter tone accidentals are also used as pitch definitions. And this is why in microtonal terminology, we have not only the key of A flat, but also the key of A one quarter flat and the key A three quarter flat. Taken together, these factors seem to delay the integration and wider adoption of microtonal music. In contrast, the polychromatic system can define these new micro pitches and keys with the addition of pitch color alone. To understand the evolution of the polychromatic system, imagine a sheet of music. It has two dimensions, the horizontal width and the vertical height. Now imagine adding a third dimension of depth which would show the pitch color subcomponents of each chromatic pitch. This is the way I think of the polychromatic system, as a three-dimensional chromatic perspective. Look how easily the polychromatic system expands the limits of chromatic notation and terminology with a minimal use of added accidental symbols. Here is a chromatic score which is easily adapted to 72 pitches per octave by using polychromatic notation. For me, the insights about a polychromatic system came from practical application. The innovative keyboard controllers that I work with 
make it possible to play scales up to and beyond 100 pitches per octave. At this point, it became obvious that creating another group of accidental symbols would be incredibly difficult to teach and to understand or work with. The polychromatic system creates an intuitive framework that can be applied to any micro-pitch scale. In this way, it functions as a foundational system for microtonal music. Polychromatic pitch colors are not absolutely defined, like the pitches on a piano. Instead, the color spectrum, as a series of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet, implies a relative flat to sharp ordering of micro pitches within a scale series. Specifically, it establishes a visual and auditory association from flat as infrared all the way up to sharp as ultraviolet. And this becomes the basis for describing and notating any micro pitch. This means that the color spectrum ordering remains consistent while the actual color attached to each pitch can be flexibly defined at the beginning of a score. With the polychromatic system, unique accidentals are no longer needed to notate each type of microtonal scale. In other words, flexible definitions of each pitch within an established pitch color series are the basis of an intuitive polychromatic framework, which can be applied to any possible microtonal scale. And this makes it easier for musicians to use many varieties of micro-pitch scales without the need to learn new notation symbols for each one. So, with 36 pitches per octave, the polychromatic system uses three color varieties of each chromatic pitch. This allows for a fluency of notating and describing all types of micro-pitch scales. And this system can efficiently notate scales beyond 100 notes per octave. The limitation of the polychromatic system comes from its foundational framework. It's an extension of the chromatic system, and the chromatic system is an extension of the modal system. So it still retains the simple A through G note names and numerical interval values, which range from the second through the 13th. Let's end with some thoughts on future developments in music. As micro intervals become described as pitch color combinations, the next step might be a musical language based entirely on this type of integrated auditory visual framework without any reference to the modal series at all. One question that I've been thinking a lot about is how new music controller designs like three-dimensional surfaces and virtual spaces might expand our musical limits and systems. A great example is the Syntact ultrasound controller. This controller is still in development and uses an ultrasonic force field that lets a musician feel the harmonic texture of a sound. It also has optical sensors which can interpret hand gestures and allow the musician to shape the sound's acoustical characteristics in real time. I hope this video has inspired some new ideas for you to explore in your own creative practice. Thanks for watching.